weather out there looks amazing, and uh, it's just good to be together. Amen? We'll be chatting a little later at announcement time about uh, some of our plans for next week, but it's great to have everyone here today, and those that are listening online, it's also great to have you. Let's stand together. We're going to pray, and then we're going to worship the Lord. Amen? I came to worship the Lord. Did you come to worship the Lord today? Come on. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for a chance to be together with your beautiful people, with God's beautiful people. Thank you, Lord, for the body of Christ. Thank you that we could be together to encourage each other, to encourage each other in our most holy faith. Lord, I pray for our time together up here and our special kids' time downstairs, that you would bless each and every person, as I prayed earlier today, from the youngest toddler to the oldest senior and everyone in between, that we would just have a great time in your presence, Lord. Just bless each one in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brent and uh, Chris are coming to lead us in worship. Good morning. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Well, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Oh, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Of glory divine, heir of salvation, the purchase of God, and born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Oh, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. My song, praising my Savior all the day long. Oh, perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. I'm watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in his love oh this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song i'm praising my savior all the day long perfect submission Perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long.
Let's pray together. Lord, we just thank you for all that you've done for us. Um, Lord, we thank you for your love, for your, your death on the cross. Lord, as we just had Easter recently, Lord, and we just, Jesus, uh, what you've done everything for us. And so we thank you for it today. We praise you for it today. We, we glorify you. We, we lift up your name, who is the name above all names. And so, Lord, uh, there's not enough words we could say uh, to show you our gratitude, to show you how, to just describe how awesome you are, Lord, but we'll, we'll do our best to do that, Lord. Uh, we'll try, because uh, it's worth it. It's, you're worthy of our praise, Lord. And so uh, we're going to keep doing it. We're going to continue doing it, Lord, whether we're in the church building or outside or, or at home, God. doesn't matter where we are. We can lift up your name. We can praise you, uh, and we can glorify you. And so, Lord, we just ask and pray that you would help us today uh, to continue to do that. And over these next weeks, even if it's, if it's feeling tough over this next time, Lord, we can still praise you because you're still good. 
And so would you help us to see that uh, over these next weeks, um, that, Lord, you are good. You are worthy of praise. Regardless of our circumstances, you are good. Uh, and so, Lord, would you help each one of us to see that, to know that, to take it deep inside ourselves, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for your help uh, during this time. Father, we just want to pray for Keith Goodberry today. Uh, would you just be with him today in hospital, Father? Would you do a miracle in his life, God? We pray you'd bring full healing to his body, that, God, you would just, uh, just take every issue that's going on. Uh, would you just heal it, God? Would you fix it? Would you, would you bring it to where it should be, Lord God, in his body? And so we just thank you, God, for your, your touch upon him today. Uh, would you just encourage his family as well, Lord God? And would you just be with him today and bring your, bring your hand upon him? Lord, we just thank you for all that you do for us. And Lord, as we continue to worship, continue to pray, we just be focused on you. May the other things of this, of this week be gone, and we know your presence and your touch today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Um, Pastor Paul will come up here in a sec, but I do want to point out one thing. Could I have the three Flynn kids stand up for a minute and do a little turnaround? Do you see how they're all wearing these Pursue shirts? Yesterday, we had our online youth co conference, and so that was fun. We had the youth here uh, all nicely spaced out and everything, but we had our little conference with some good, good worships and good speakers, and uh, they're wearing the t-shirts they got from it. So anyway, I totally forgot to wear mine yesterday. I was so sad. I got it ready the night before, and I left it at home. Anyway, but they're, they're rocking them today, so that's good. Anyway, thanks, guys. You can come up, Pastor Paul. Yes, that was awesome. I got to, I even got to come and uh, hear a little bit about that youth conference. And Pastor, Pastor Drew let me have a slice of pizza. So how many know youth ministry without pizza is just like, it doesn't work, you know what I'm saying? So thank you, Pastor Drew, for, for organizing that for our kids. And uh, do you know how many there was registered across the uh, district? Uh, about 500 kids online. Isn't that amazing? In the middle of all this stuff that's going on. We still had about 500 kids uh, worshiping the Lord together through the means of, uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's amazing uh, what, what we're able to do. Okay, so we got any birthdays or anniversaries in the house this morning? Anyone? I'm looking here. Beep, beep. What? Yes, he did. He had a birthday this week. I believe it was a special birthday. I believe the biblical uh, interpretation would be two score. Two score. Those of you, how many of you know what a score is in the Bible? Okay, kids, ask your parents. They probably won't know. Ask your grandparents. They'll know. Okay, two score. The big 4 0. Oh, four decades, buddy. That is amazing. No, you, no, I'm going to sing to you. Like, I'm going to, like, take a knee here and it's, yeah, we're going to do this. Anyone else with a birthday or anniversary today? Jason, you got a birthday too? Do you, uh, you, now, how many score are you? Oh, so you're, so you're two score less one. Or I score score, to use the Roman. Okay, I score score. Anyways, I know what, yeah, I know. Anyone else? We've got the two, the two young lads. Anyone else with a birthday? And what about anniversaries? A month are we in April? It won't be long. We'll be coming into May, June. That's sometimes big anniversary time. Okay, so we're going to sing to these guys, Jason and Brent. Now, are you still going to sing because now it's Jason's birthday? Or or I, I have to sing now. Oh, boy. Okay, here we go. Ready? All right, we're going to pick it up a little. I'll start though. for ready? you. Go, ready? Happy yeah. birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Special people, happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you and you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord show his mercy on special people like Brent and Jason. <laughs> That's awesome, awesome, awesome. So next Sunday, uh, pray for us. We are just, we're going to, we'll, we'll, we'll send out an announcement this week, but we're just working out some things to see if we can do something in the parking lot. So we may be having drive-in church next Sunday, and we can't meet in the building. 
So uh, we're going to work that out this week. So we will be sending out an email and we'll be posting stuff online and you can always call the church. We'll probably have this thing figured out early in the week because we'll have lots to do to sort of get it together. So that's our goal next week is that we'll, we will still be uh, being in person in vehicles. All right. So uh, that's kind of exciting, but it'll be out this side and uh, hopefully we'll be able to figure that all out. Um, and just a couple quick announcements about uh, when we leave today. When we leave at the end of the service, and I'll say this at the end of the sermon, we need to do reverse wedding order. In other words, back row first, and then row by row we have to leave, okay? And when we leave, we have to exit the building. So parents, when you're going down to get your children after church, Take everything with you. Don't go down and bring them back up and go back down. Just go, all right? <laughs> no, we're just trying to do, uh, we, we want to be together, and I'm so thankful we can, but we want to just make sure that we uh, do all the public health requirements. Uh, and also, if you're going to talk outside, make sure you've got your mask on, all right? We just, we just want to be safe. Uh, this is serious. We know that. We know that, and so we just want to be safe, and uh, we want us to have a just a how many just a long, long life, amen. Because we got a lot of people that we want to tell Jesus about, amen, amen, amen. And one of them is to obey your parents, Sandra. And so I would like to tell you that I did not start well with that, but as I got, became a Christian and got older, my mom will tell you that I did much better at that, and so I know I'm going to live a long life. Amen? Amen. Amen. The kids have a special time downstairs. So parents, if you can sign your kids in, we have a kid's time now downstairs. Hey, have a great time, kids. Have a blast. And uh, we're going to continue to worship the Lord together. Amen. Feel free to stand again. cross I look or to the cross I cling of the suffering I do drink of its work I do sing oh on it my Savior was both bruised and crushed Showed that God is love and God is just. Yeah. At the cross, you you beckon me, you draw me gently to my knees, and I am lost for words, so lost in love. I'm Sweetly broken, only surrender. What a priceless gift of undeserved life. Have I been given to Christ crucified? Oh, and you call me out of death And you call me into life And I was under your wrath But now through the cross I'm reconciled It's at the cross you, you beckon me you draw me gently to my knees, and I am lost for words, so 
lost in love, I'm sweetly broken, only surrender at the cross, you beckon me, you draw me gently to my knees, and I am lost for words, so lost in love, I'm sweetly broken, only surrender. Verse 2, oh, what a priceless gift of undeserved life. Have I been given through Christ crucified? Oh, and you call me out of death. You call me into life. I was under your wrath But now through the cross I'm reconciled It's at the cross you You beckon me You draw me gently To my knees And I am lost for worse So lost in love I'm sweetly broken Holy surrender at the cross, you you beckon me, you draw me gently to my knees, and I am lost for words, so lost in love. I'm sweetly broken, holy surrender. This is a song to remind us that we belong. you 
Greater are you who's in me than he who's in the world. The words that you have spoken are stronger than the curse. Greater are you who's in me than he who's in the world. The words that you have spoken are stronger than the curse. Well, stronger than the curse. Greater are you who's in me. Greater are you who's in me than he who's in the world. The words that you have spoken are stronger than the curse. Greater are you who's in me than he who's in the world. The words that you have spoken are stronger than the curse. Well, stronger than the curse. You know the enemy can take what I have or change who I am. I belong to you. You know the enemy can take what I have, change who I am. I belong to you. You know the enemy can take what I have, change who I am. I belong to you. You know the enemy can. Take what I have, change who I am, I belong to you. Just to be reminded this morning, for greater are you who is in me than he who's in the world. The words that you have spoken are stronger than the curse. Greater are you who's in me than he who's in the world. The words that you have spoken are stronger than the curse. Stronger than the curse. The enemy can take what I have or change who I am. I belong to you. You know the enemy can take what I have, change who I am. I belong to you. We are made to belong to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Worthy of 
of every song we could ever sing Oh, you're worthy of all the praise we could ever bring And you're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you It's Jesus' name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Oh, you're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me and holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me and i will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and i trust in you alone and I will not be shaken and I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone and I will not Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life, I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation, and I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken, and I will build my life. Upon your love, it is a firm foundation, and I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. I just want to thank you today for these incredible worship songs that we've sung today, Lord. Lord, I want to thank you that we can sing to you. These are the songs of the redeemed, and we can sing to you. And Lord, you made us in your image, and one of the, the main purposes of our life is to worship you to lift up your name. And I thank you that not only on Sundays, but during the week, we can just, you know, we can just sing a simple song. We can just say, Jesus, you're worthy. You're worthy. 
We think about God, what you did when you sent Jesus. For us, we have so much to to give you praise. And we think of what's going on right now in the courts of heaven. And the angels are singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. God, would you fill this earth with your glory? Would you send your Holy Spirit to minister your strength and your peace and your power to your people in this time? We think of the millions and millions of people around the world that are worshiping you today. Some that are, that are already, are already you know, into Monday and some that will still worship you today, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that we are a part of the body of Christ and together we can lift up your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, it's, uh, it's good to have Joshua home. Some of you may have seen a bearded fellow beside me up at the front here. That's Joshua, our oldest son, and he just got back from a, an amazing trip to... Uh, to Uge, which is uh, how many hours north of here, Josh, driving? Nine and a half hours uh, north of us, up in, uh, you know, up in Quebec. And, uh, and in a couple of weeks, Josh is going to be sharing about his trip up there. Uh, May 1st, he graduates, and then he's uh, ready to go in full-time ministry. And uh, we're excited about what God is, is doing And uh, he's one of us, amen? Some of you here, you saw him, well, when we came, he was, uh, when we came here, he was five, and uh, was rocking kindergarten, and now he's, uh, he's going to go into full-time ministry this, this, uh, this, this May, somewhere, sometime in, very soon, and so it's great to have you with us, Josh, and we're looking forward to that. Well, today's message is, uh, is quite challenging. It's, uh, um, I wanted to show you this, this book. Um, it's called the seven, the seven Sayings of the Savior on the Cross. That's hard to say, isn't it? The Seven Sayings of the Savior on the Cross by Arthur W. Pink. And a lot of the... Uh, some of the things that I'm going to be sharing and quoting are from this book. I found it quite profound, and actually it didn't use this for some of the other sayings, but this one I just found there was so much uh, incredible information, and I'll be done this series in a couple weeks, so if anybody wants to take a look at this sometime, it's, it's, quite, it's quite profound. Um, Matthew chapter 27, we're going to be kind of jumping around a few different scriptures today, but this is our main scripture uh, that I want to read to you. Matthew 27, and maybe a few of you are like, okay, pastor, like, are you still at the cross? Like, we're, like, we've already had the resurrection, we're on our way to Pentecost, but how many of you know the cross is important all year round, amen? Amen. The cross is central, amen? We are never... We're never not, that doesn't, that's a double negative, isn't it? But anyways, we're never not going to preach about the cross in this church, amen? The cross is so important. Matthew 27, verse uh, 46. And about the ninth hour, does anybody want to guess when that is? That's 3 p.m. The sixth hour is when people got up or went to work. That's the first, sorry, 6 a.m., and that's the first hour, okay? So the ninth hour is 3 p.m. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In the New Living Translation, it says, at about, the thir- about 3 o'clock, Jesus called out in a loud voice, 
Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? So there's two words we see there, um, forsaken and abandoned. Okay. Now, this was the cry of the suffering one. This was the cry of Jesus. And when we look at the Gospels, specifically the book of Matthew, it's absolutely incredible when you see the extremes. You look at Matthew chapter 3, verse 17, and God the Father declares at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. How many of you heard that verse before? This is my beloved son. You know, Jesus is baptized. The spirit comes down. It's the beginning of his ministry. And then there's this voice from the heavens. It's God the Father. And he says, this is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. And then we flip over to Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. And we hear the son say on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Forsaken is a tragic word. And Pink says in his book, for 33 years, Jesus enjoyed unbroken communion with the father. But then... Pink states this, and I want to read this to you, and there's a few quotes I want to read from his book today. Listen to this. The soldiers have cruelly mocked him. They had arrayed him with a crown of thorns. They had scourged and buffeted him. They even went so far as to spit upon him and pluck out his hair. They despoiled him of his garments and put him to an open shame, yet he suffered it all in silence. They pierced his hands and his feet, yet he endured the cross, despising the shame. The vulgar crowd taunted him, and the thieves who were crucified with him flung the same taunts into his faith. Yet he opened not his mouth in response to all that he suffered at the hands of men. Not a cry escaped his lips. But now, as the concentrated wrath of heaven descends on him, he cries, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Surely this is a cry that ought to melt the hardest heart. David said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, but on the cross we behold the righteous one forsaken. There are reasons for this cry. And out of this book uh, that I shared with you by A.W. Pink, The Seven Sayings of the Savior on the Cross, I would like to share some of the reasons for this cry. Maybe you've wondered about that. Maybe as you've thought about the seven sayings on the cross, most of them are sharing about love, you know, and forgiveness. You know, we've already dealt with, uh, you know, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. And, and on Mother's Day, we will share that beautiful word when Jesus looked at John and said, John, your mother. He told the disciple John to take care of his mother while he was dying on the cross. But here we see this cry. It's, it seems different. It seems uh, the most challenging to really understand. And so I want us to take a look at that this morning. The first thing is that here we see the awfulness of sin and the characters of its wages. The awfulness of sin and the characters of its wages. Listen to what Pink says again. The depravity of the human heart, its hatred of God, 
It's base ingratitude. It's loving of darkness rather than lights. It's preference for a murderer, uh, uh, sorry, of a murder for the prince of life was fearfully displayed. The awful character of the devil, his hostility against God, his an insatiable enmity against Christ, his power to put into the heart of man to betray the Savior was completely exposed. So too the perfections of the divine nature, God's holiness, his inflexible justice, his terrible wrath, and his matchless grace were made fully known on the cross. Not only do we see the horrible nature of the sin, of sin, but we discover the character of its awful wages. What does that mean? It's awful wages. Well, do you remember the verse that many of us learned when we were younger? Those of us who have had any time in the church at all. The wages of sin is the wages of sin is death. Romans 6:23. Listen to Romans 5:12. Some of you may have learned this one, you know, doing the old Romans road thing. By one man, Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. The wages of sin is death, was not just physical death, literally, physical death, but spiritual death. You know, before, before sin came into the world, and even after sin came into the world, and I, I've shared this before, you notice in the Old Testament, man, that guy, Methuselah, man, he lived till 969. Why don't we live that long anymore? Well, that's the impact of sin on creation. It literally affects, physically affects creation. The wages of sin is death, but it wasn't just physical, it was spiritual. Physical death separated the body from the soul and the spirit. Now, there's different theories on what you believe about that, but basically, the body, the physical part, and the spiritual part. Death separates those. But spiritual death separates us from God himself. Some have called this penal death, P-E-N-A-L, penal death. Remember when the father of the prodigal son said, this son of mine was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. Jesus was receiving, here it is, the wages that were due his people. He had no sin of his own, for he was the Holy One of God. Amen? Jesus was holy. He was without sin. But he was bearing our sins in his own body on the tree. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. So the first thing is we see the awfulness of sin and the characters of its wages. The second thing is... Here we see the absolute holiness and inflexible justice of God. I want to declare something this morning. We hear a lot about the love of God. Amen? How many are thankful for the love of God? Thank you, Jesus. I'm thankful for the love of God. We hear a lot about the love of God. But I'm hoping this morning that I can share with you about the holiness of God. And that we would see that you can't really have the one without the other. And that's what the cross is all about. And that's what this cry is all about. All right? So here we see the holiness and the inflexible justice of God. Four viewpoints of the cross. Here it is. Man's work. He displayed his depravity by nailing the perfect one to the cross. That's what man did. Man did it physically, but he also spiritually. Why did Jesus go to the cross? For us, right? Amen? For sinful mankind. Secondly, man's work. Secondly, Satan's work. He manifested insatiable enmity towards humanity. Satan hated us. He hates us. He wants to, what does he want to do? He wants to kill 
steal, amen, and destroy. That's, that's, his, that's his mission statement, John 10, 10. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus' work. He died. That was his work. He died. The just, amen, for the unjust. Jesus, that was his work. He died. The just for the unjust. Fourthly, God's work. He exhibited his holiness and satisfied his justice by pouring out his wrath on the one who was made sin for us. You know, we can look at many of the sayings of the cross and we see Jesus' love, amen, and I'm thankful for that. But in this particular saying, it speaks of the holiness of God. God's holy character could do no less than judge sin even though it was found on Christ himself. At the cross then, God's justice was satisfied and his holiness was vindicated. Wow, it's so hard to comprehend this. But a holy God cannot cannot put up with sin. But Jesus took our place, amen? Took our punishment on himself. Number three, the explanation of Gethsemane. Gethsemane. I want to read a a couple of verses to you out of, uh, if you want to write these down, I'll just read them. Uh, Matthew 26 verses 36 to 39, and Luke 22, verses 42 to 44. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He went And a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Luke 22, verses 42 to 44. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will but yours be done. Now an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthening him. Thank God for that. Verse 44, and being in agony, he was praying very fervently, and his sweat became like, became like drops of blood falling down upon the ground. You know, the word here in in the Greek, uh, verse 44, when it speaks of agony here, it speaks of one who is engaged in combat. Jesus was in a battle, amen, for the souls of humanity. He was in agony, and he said, God, if this cup can pass from me. If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. The cup is the the symbol of communion. And there could be no communion in his wrath, but only in his love. It means being cut off from communion. Not not, Not my will, Lord, but your will be done. He was struggling, understanding that there was coming a time when he when he would go on the cross where there would be separation. Number four, here we see the Savior's unswerving fidelity to God. This is so important. Have you ever noticed that when Jesus called out on the cross, he did not say, God, God, you've left me. No, 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 no. What was the first word and the third word in the phrase that Jesus called out? What was the first word? My God. Amen? My God. My God. Why have you forsaken me? The cry starts with the word my. This is so important. It was not a cry of distress. 
It was, sorry, it was a cry of distress, not a cry of distrust. Even though God had withdrawn from Jesus because the sin of the world was placed upon him, Jesus still calls out, my God, amen? My God, my God. But the Savior continued trusting, though there was no deliverance, though he felt forsaken, we know, amen, that it was only for a season. It was for that short time on the cross. What an example, listen to this, oh, what an example has the Savior left his people. It is comparatively easy to trust God while the sun is shining. The test comes when all is dark, amen? The test comes when all is dark. Christians, all may be dark with you. You may no longer behold the light of God's countenance. Providence seems to frown on you. Notwithstanding, we need to say, Eli, Eli, amen. My God, my God. Fifthly, here we see the basis of our salvation. And this is, this is kind of, we're, we're, we're coming down a bit here towards, I know this is, there's lots to kind of take in today. Here we see the basis of our salvation. Here it is. Like, grab, grab a hold of this, okay? This way was the way of substitution. The just Jesus suffering for the unjust. The Son of God himself was the one selected to be the substitute. For no other one would suffice. Amen? At the cross... All our sins were laid upon Christ and therefore did divine judgment fall upon him. On the cross, Christ was making, some of you have heard this word before, you maybe have read it in an older version of the Bible, was making propitiation. In other words, Jesus took our place. Now, I want you to think about it this way. If I am standing here representing humanity, the wages of sin is death. What I deserve for what I have done, for the sin that I have committed, is death, and ultimately spiritual death, ultimately eternal damnation, right? Jesus comes along he takes my place. He becomes my propitiation. He takes my place and he takes my punishment on himself so that when I accept Christ as my Savior, when I accept the sacrifice of what Christ has done for me, God looks at me through Jesus and declares me righteous. Amen? That is the gospel. That's the gospel. The death of Christ on the cross was a... De listen to what Pink says. The death... Sorry, listen to what it says in Galatians. The death of Christ on the cross was a death of cursed. Listen to what it says. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangs on a tree. Listen to what Pink says. This is very important. Here then is the basis of our salvation. This is, this is the bottom line right here. We're in the center here. Our sins have been born. God claims against us have been fully met. Christ was forsaken of God for a season that we might enjoy his presence forever. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Let every believing soul make the answer. He entered the awful darkness that I might walk in the light. Amen. He drank the cup of woe that I might drink the cup of joy. He was forsaken that I might be forgiven. Amen. He was forsaken that I might be forgiven. Here, number six, here we see 
the supreme, here it is, the supreme evidence of Christ's love for us. We've talked about God's holiness. We've talked about God's wrath. We've talked about God's justice. Here we see the supreme evidence of Christ's love. Greater love have no man than this, than a man lay his life down for a friend. Christ was pure. He was perfect. He never sinned. And yet he willingly suffered for us because he loved us. Amen? Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. John 13, verse 1. The last thing I want to share with you uh, this morning is, is uh, and this is challenging, uh, is here we see the destruction of the larger hope. We are told that God loves everybody and that he is too merciful to ever carry out the threatening word. Do you remember what Satan said to Adam and Eve? Do you remember what he said? When they were going to commit sin, and God had told them that if they eat of the, f- of the fruit, they would die. What did Satan say to them? He said, you will not surely die. He lied to them. He said, you're just going to know lots of stuff. You know, this is the knowledge of, you know, you, you, you will not surely die. Listen to what it says in Mark 16, verse 16. He that believeth, or he who believes, shall not be damned. So what's the reverse of that? He that believes shall not be damned. The reverse of that is he who does not believe will be damned. God spared not his son when he took the sinner's place, nor will he spare him who rejects the Savior. Christ was separated from God for three hours, and if we, if we, if one, if we finally reject him as Savior, we will be separated from God forever. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord? Second Thessalonians 1 verse 9. Here it is. Here's a basic summary. God is love. Amen? God is love. God is holy. Hell is real. But Jesus paid the price. Jesus paid the price. Amen? You know, you know there are people that are still a part of the, or are a part of um, the Christian religion today that do not believe that anybody goes to hell. They don't believe that. They don't believe in hell. They believe that all people eventually, down the road, go to heaven. Everybody gets to go to heaven. Everybody gets a, gets a free pass. Everyone gets a pass. Everyone gets a golden ticket. We all go to heaven. I have a question for you if that's true. If that's true, why did Jesus have to suffer and shed his blood on the cross. It's because Jesus took our punishment, amen, that we can have salvation, amen? And that's what we need to share with people in an encouraging way. Jesus died on the cross so that we could have eternal life, amen? But we have to accept that. We have to embrace that, amen? We have to embrace it ourselves. And so, even though it's a challenging message, you know, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When Jesus took the sin of the world on himself, it should encourage us, it should challenge us more to share his love with others. Amen? To share his love with others. Listen to this little summary summary statements that I put together from those, those seven points. Jesus cried out because the sin of the world was on him. God is holy, 
and had to turn away from sin. He had to punish sin. Jesus took our sin willingly. He still called his father, my God, but he took our sin willingly. This is the basis of salvation. Jesus loved us by taking our place, and those that do not accept his sacrifice for them will ultimately receive everlasting punishment. Those who accept his sacrifice will receive everlasting life. That, my friends, is the message of the gospel and the importance of why we need to look at this word from the cross when Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Let's bow our heads. Just as you've been watching online or, or here today, I want to ask a question with heads bowed and eyes closed. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I've never, ever heard that before. I've never thought about that. I've always wondered about why Jesus called out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? To think that Jesus took my sin on him, on, him, on the cross the perfect spotless one, to die for me. And pastor, I'm here today, and I would like to ask Jesus to forgive my sin. I'd like to accept what he did on the cross, and I'd like him to come into my heart and be my Savior. You're here in the service today. You're watching from home, and you would like to do that. Just either private message us, or if you're here uh, in person today, that you would like to ask Jesus to come into your life and be your personal Lord and Savior. Just slip up a hand. Anyone at all here today? Just slip up a hand. Everyone's heads bowed, eyes closed. You'd just like to ask Jesus for forgiveness. You'd like to accept his sacrifice that he did on the cross for you. If you're listening online today, you can private message us. We will respond to you. Anyone at all today? Hallelujah. How many of you would say with me this morning, Pastor, I'm so thankful for the cross. Come on. I'm so thankful for the cross. I'm thankful for what Jesus did. Jesus, we thank you that when you were on the cross... When you were all alone, when you, you weren't alone, but when you felt alone, when you felt forsaken, when the sin of the world was on you, even when you were in the Garden of Gethsemane, you said, not my will, but yours be done. Thank you, Jesus, that you didn't go by your own will, but you went for your, your Father's will, and you went to the cross. You willingly gave up your life for us so that we could have eternal life, so that we could have salvation. We thank you, Lord, for your blood. We'll never stop singing about the cross. We'll never stop singing about what you did for us. Jesus, I pray today that you would help us as believers to realize the seriousness of this message. To realize, Lord, there are many that do not know. That do not know the good news that we have received. Lord, I pray that you would help us in this time, even in our world, in this dark time with all the things that are going on. That we would be able to share your message of love. The ultimate love, the greatest love that you gave your life for us, Jesus. Help us to share that with our friends, with our relatives, with total strangers. Not to be afraid to share the message of the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Why don't we stand together and Brent's going to come and lead us in a, in a, in a closing song.
gently to my knees and I am lost for words so lost in love I'm sweetly broken wholly surrendered at the cross you you beckon me you draw me gently to my knees and I am lost for words so lost in love I'm sweetly broken wholly surrendered oh what a priceless gift of undeserved life have I been given to Christ crucified under your wrath now through the cross I'm reconciled call me out when you call me out of death you call me into life well I was under your wrath now through the cross I'm reconciled we've been called out of death Oh, and you call me out of death. Oh, you call me into life. And I was under your eyes. But now through the cross I'm reconciled. It's at the cross you, you beckon me. Draw me gently to my knees and I am lost for words, so lost in love. I'm sweetly broken, wholly surrendered at the cross. You, you beckon me, you draw me gently to my knees and I am lost for words, so Lost in love, I'm sweetly broken, wholly surrendered. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's, let's thank him this morning for the cross, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Thank you that you died in our place. You died... We deserve death. We deserve spiritual death. But you took our place, Jesus. We have so much to be thankful for today. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your care. We thank you for eternal life that will live with you forever. Jesus, I pray that you would empower us today by your Holy Spirit to be able to share this beautiful message of the cross with those around us, Lord. Father, I pray as we go today, we will go not as people who grieve, but we will go with hope knowing that one day we'll see you face to face. And Lord, help us to share your love, to share your unconditional love with others around us, Jesus. Lord, go with us today. Lord, I pray today as we, as we shared in our devotion this morning online, Jesus, that you are our fountain, Lord, that out of our innermost being would flow rivers of loving, living water, Lord, a fountain of life, that we would speak words of life and encouragement, words of hope and words of faith in this time. Lord, we come against fear. We come against anxiety. We come against timidity. Lord, we speak faith and love and hope today. We ask that you would go with us and that you would use us, you would cover us, you would watch over our families. We thank you, Lord, that you are going to go with us today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
And I 